welcome to Oz by Drone. I'm Greg and this is definitely not John. Hello and welcome Kelly. Howdy, how's it going? It's going pretty good. Welcome to the show. Thanks for being our fill-in co-host today. Absolutely. Happy to be here. It's a beautiful night in Texas and you know I always think of Texas as the uh, the western hemisphere, northern hemisphere, Australia. <laughs> well, yeah, you are part of Australia indirectly, just a long way away. Yes, we love the shrimp on the barbie. Yeah. So what's happening for you? You've, it's, what have you been doing since Spin Up? <clears throat> well, I, I had uh, Mavic Mini. That was taking up a lot of my time, and it was a lot of fun to learn about that and post videos for it. Um, I have been working my regular job, and that's been taking up some time, too. Of course, you got to pay the bills, right, to make all this stuff happen. And then I had a chance to go to Amsterdam and fly my – I took my – I actually was going to take the Mavic Mini, and then I thought, you know, I want to do some hyperlapse stuff, so I ended up taking the Mavic 2 Zoom and okay. had a great time flying around the windmills in Amsterdam. As you do. You should have um, tried to look up our friend over there. I know um, uh, Cold Flake from No Limit Drones is um, around that kind of part of the world, but uh, maybe next time. Well, you know, my geography is not that great because I was, I was talking to people in Germany as well as uh, – as well as Denmark, and they're like, "Hey, we're nowhere near you." You know, <laughs> like it'd be like it would be like someone going to Perth and saying, "Hey, Greg, can you come over and see me?" You know, and they're in Perth and you're in Sydney, right? Yeah, I'm just hearing a message from my producer to turn the volume up. Is that for me or for him or both? For for Kelly, I can hear him quite fine. People in the chat, if we're having any problems with the audio, do let me know. Maybe I think it's her headphones because, yeah. Anyway, what other anyway, things happen? Yeah, if, if I'm too low, I can talk louder too. Okay, well, yeah, there is that. Um, some stuff just out of interest, news happening in my local area. And by the way, Kelly, definitely, yeah, move your camera down a little bit. You're cutting off your head, you know. Got you. <laughs> uh, well, you guys have some fires going, right? I was about to talk about that. Yeah, happening locally in, um, in Australia. We've had lots of fires recently. And I want to give you a number that I saw in the media the other day. Um, it was a million hectares of land burned, which translates to about 250,000 acres of land burned oh, out. Wow. Right? Wow. So when, huh. when, when we have fires in Australia, they just go and go and they keep going and, yeah. Well, it's been on the news over here. I mean, it's a big deal globally. As a matter of fact, they were showing satellite shots that showed the smoke going out over the ocean. Um, you know, just basically there's so much smoke coming off of that. Have you been affected personally? Personally, this time around, no. So our, ho our house is close to the Royal National Park, which is probably the largest um, in New South Wales, certainly. But um, it's previously been affected when we've had bushfires in the past, but not this season. So nothing close to us. Um, our house also is backing right directly onto a river. So you know, we, it, it's a very, very steep riverbank and there's n the other side, we got a highway. So we're kind of directly, I don't think we're ever going to be affected directly by you, fire. You've got some fire, firewalls around you kind of, kind of protecting you, it sounds like. Yeah, but even so, even so, I remember one fire season, the other side of the river, um, we saw there was um, bushfire on the other side of the river and we saw the embers blowing up in the wind and uh, you know, wow. some people were thinking maybe it was gonna gonna jump the river, but thankfully it didn't. Well, we anyway. we, we are certainly uh, certainly hoping the best for you guys because I, I, Texas had a bunch of wildfires in uh, 2011, Bastrop area. You still, if you drive through Bastrop between Austin and Houston, you still see all the damage from that. There's still you know just trees devastated. So I know it can be terrible, but at the same time. It's kind of nature, right? You're supposed to have these fires every so often to clear out brush and such. So, yeah, there you, go. You, you are definitely meant to have it. I guess one of the frustrations that a lot of people say over here is they want more proactive backburning to prevent, yeah, um, to, to minimize sure. the fuel load. And that's one of the, you know, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of arguments. I won't get into the politics. Just a couple of quick other news things, letting you know. Um, our local council, the Sutherland Shire Council, they'd previously um, erected no drone signs in a location that you, re you remember the, the little spark that we flew around the world. Yeah, you remember yeah, at the beginning yeah, of that, sure. that location is now a no drone zone, not because uh -huh. of the helicopter port, because the helicopter port gets used maybe once a year 
um, they 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 haven't been able to actually explain why they don't want to do it yet. They, at first, they said CASA told them no drones, and we spoke to CASA, and they said, no, it wasn't us. And then they said it was the airport committee, and no, they said it wasn't us, but the council have put these signs up anywhere, and I'm continuing to battle with them to find out why and how they can justify that. So, D Does that make it a law, or is it just like guidance for that property, like well, a suggestion? <clears throat> They've put up a sign, and I don't have the photo here ready to show you, but the sign says that it is a local government act um, that you can be fined under. But I checked, and to be f fineable under that act, they needed to have done something else that they haven't done. So it's long and complicated, and I won't bore people with it now. Okay. But let's do something else. Let's get into, it's that time of the day, get into the news. Um, as dun, always... Dun, dun. Yeah, as always, thanks to Jeff Sills for helping to compile the news and, um, and others who are helping behind the scenes as well. Um, all of this news and other news stories end up on Dronebook, so do go out and check up Dronebook. Our first story today is all about dogs and um, specifically fake news about dogs. So the picture you see here is a story that was on Ken Heron's show the other day, and uh, there's two stories going around. The first one is that this man was supposedly acquitted, which is correct, of taunting dogs. But the fact is he didn't actually do it in the first place. Um, there's been evidence shown in court that he's had 100 flights with this drone. And since flying, only nine of those were anywhere near those kennels. And they were at an altitude where the dogs wouldn't have been able to hear them at any particular significant audio volume. So. It's frustrating when you've got people who are going and taking people to court and charging him with environmental cruelty and all of these other things. But I actually saw his lawyers um, on another stream um, and he was nowhere near there. And the, the drone evidence backed that up. It sounds like they were just trying to give him a rough time. Oh, rough. <laughs> Uh, I do have my soundboard somewhere. I'm not going to get it out for that one, though. It's not worth it. it it's, it's, I don't know. It, it's, drones are bad. <laughs> drones are bad. And it's really frustrating that people in the community take that approach and try and go and take it to drone owners all the time and we're I, copying it. I, I need to call my dog because here's the thing. My dog is so apathetic about drones. My dog does not care. And I fly them all over the house, all over the backyard. She is constantly being inundated with drones. And she just kind of looks up like, oh, there's another one. You know, it's, it's just, I think it's personality. And I certainly don't advocate taunting dogs, but I think people are being a little overly, I don't know, crazy. Yeah. I did actually see another story this week where a, guy, a kid was um, playing with um, a dog and his father in the park and the, the father was chasing the child with a drone and a dog with a drone and they were having a great time. Certainly not legal to do that in flight to be literally chasing someone, but yeah. Oh, I've, 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 I have definitely taunted my dog. If that's a crime, then, uh, then, I, then I could be in well, real the, trouble. She can tell the you. Dog, the dog, one thing, but the child, you're not meant to be going and getting that close to people and deliberately well, trying you know, to. Tate, you, you, uh, at least uh, some of you guys know who Tate is. He, he deserves it. So, you know, just stand. <laughs> okay. Our second one is um, entitled Karma, Too Close for Comfort. And this is a story about another animal and someone who was droning. Let's have a look. So this footage is not actually new, um, but you won't see much like it again, I don't think. This particular Texas pronghorn, I don't know what a pronghorn is, but anyway, gave the drone pilot a glimpse at nature's beauty and um, well, followed up with a bit of a serving of nature's wrath. And I uh, thought it was appropriate. Pronghorns are, are uh, deer that couldn't get into the University of Texas, longhorns. They, they, they are. <laughs> They're actually pronghorns. Or, or they go to OU, right, Lloyd? <laughs> oh, oh, ouch. <laughs> wow. So Man. I did want to show that story because in the context of the first one, obviously that didn't happen. This did happen. And we want to encourage drone pilots not to do stupid things with your aircraft. I guess, I guess the guy got the drone back, though, because he has the footage, right? Absolutely. I mean, it, I mean it, but, but it looked pretty bad. Yeah. 
Our third story today is entitled Heavy Lifting, and um, this one is there's a UAS company heading to North Dakota, Mobile Recon Systems, the manufacturer of the Dauntless Heavy Lifting Quadcopter, is moving their operations from Lexicon to Grand Forks with the help of the University of North Dakota Center for Innovation. Why do I show this? I just thought it was a cool aircraft, and certainly the Dauntless apparently can lift up to 200 pounds in weight. Have you seen that Very one before? Cool. I have not. That's that's news to me. That's that's yeah. a lot of weight. Is it is it uh, is it battery powered or gasoline? Like no, you, it's battery like, powered. Uh, apparently, battery powered. Wow. Because I know yeah. I know that um, part of the problem with with battery uh, power versus versus you know combustible is that they just don't have as much power to be able to lift things like that. So it's pretty impressive for a battery. Certainly the size of it in that picture, I think it's a lot bigger than you'd probably expect, but um, yeah. Well, it Moving couldn't on. lift me. If it's, if it's only 200 pounds, it couldn't lift me. Just saying. <laughs> Speaking of which, you did hear, hear that story about the fishing guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's um, still battling with CASA and um, that's still ongoing. He doesn't know where that's up to. They haven't charged him yet, but that's still an ongoing debacle. But anyway, our next news story, this one um, I've entitled Wi-Fi in the Sky. The um, Air Force wants its Valkyrie drone to help um, other aircraft talk to each other. So they're going to be beginning tests involving a um, Valkyrie stealthy unmanned aircraft acting as a data fusion and relay gateway between manned aircraft. Me being the geek that I am, I just think that's a cool, <laughs> cool use, a mobile Wi-Fi hotspot to go and bridge planes together. And and imagine, I mean, it would have to be traveling at a similar speed to keep up so they could stay in range, right? I mean, the Absolutely. thing is probably going uh, over Mach 1, don't you think? Yeah. In I don't know cases. what speed it comes up to, but whatever it is, they definitely do need to be um, matching speed to be able to actually do anything effective there. I, I've often wondered, um, you know, and, and I guess, do you, do you have many trains in Australia? Is train travel pretty common? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, having having been to Europe a few times and ridden on some of the ice trains, which is the inner city express that go that you know they they top out at 150, 120 miles an hour. I often and they have Wi-Fi on them. I often wonder if you live near the train track, if you suddenly see a hot spot and then it disappears. You know, it's like oh, there's that hot spot and then it goes away because the train's going by. Yeah, yeah, that. It does happen, and that's you know as as Wi-Fi and even in the drone world, in the Wi-Fi world, we're getting a continually noisier spectrum all the time. That is true. Yeah. Moving on, we've got our next one, which is something. It's U.S. based story in Boston. There's not the Boston Tea Party, but a festival, a drone film festival. For the first time ever, the film festival is about to showcase the work of sky high cinematographers and photogra photographers. From around the world, the festival has a rule that requires 50% of drone captured footage for submission. The organizers wow. encourage participants to start with a very conventional shot that ends up expanding and pulling away, doing your traditional pullback shot. Now, I don't have the audio here, but this one was one of the submissions that have been submitted into the film festival. And um, you can see certainly there's a lot of drone footage in there and you've got a lot of opportunities when you're talking about um, uh, vessels and surf military and search and rescue and ships and all that kind of thing. Boy, that thing, that thing is taking those waves. Look at that. Oh my goodness. I think you talk about getting seasick. <laughs> that would yeah. be something. But I think it's a really good idea. I think, um, you know, as we move into using a lot more drone photography to encourage people to, to use the tool, to learn the tool and film festivals that are, um, you know, setting some ground rules, 50% drone footage, I think it's going to gonna help the industry. Well, and, and I don't, do you guys ever look at air views? Air views? Yeah. Uh, air, air views, uh, it's a whole uh, channel. It's kind of its own platform just for drone uh, filmmakers. It's, it's, it's specific. Um, it's, it would be like YouTube drone channels, but it's all drone stuff, and it's Air V U E S. I think it, it's it's worth checking out, you know. And I think they hold okay. a film festival actually 
that features uh, drone footage, but it's done online. This isn't like a physical film festival. I'd be curious to see if the Boston one is like where people actually show up and watch screenings together and all that. Yeah. Look, I haven't heard of it. I'll, I'll definitely have to check that one out. So, so thanks for that. If anyone wants to yeah. look that up and paste the link in the chat, that'd be absolutely awesome. We'll do one more story and then we're going to jump in to have a chat to our guest. How does that sound? We're going to go and have a look at a tsunami alert. Um, oh, wow. this, one, this one in Sendai City, they've been testing a Nokia drone during a simulated tsunami alert. The um, city and Nokia successfully conducted a test flight of a Nokia drone on a private LTE network and provided Nokia provided by the Nokia Digital Automation Cloud. They tested the potential use of drones during a tsunami or other disasters to help um, in prevention and mitigation efforts. When lives, security and the environment are at stake, you must prepare for anything and everything by rehearsing. And that's just what we did using this scenario. The pressure in a gas pipe suddenly drops. Our drones with gas sensors, thermal imaging and HD cameras are sent up to take a look. A person is lying on the roof. We can see high concentrations of gas close to him. The video stream also shows a broken pipe close to the man. So the first responders have to take precautions as they go up onto the roof. With a good overview of the situation and the problem identified, the drones can be called back and their regular flight scheme restored. Drones are our airborne watchdogs, searching for intruders, sniffing for gas, and monitoring bark piles to make sure they don't catch fire. This is possible today with Nokia technology. Yeah, so um, some good That's testing really cool. and planning. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I've got <laughs> I've got family in parts of the world that are more prone to um, ad adverse weather conditions, like the typhoons and whatnot in the Philippines. And just seeing some of that planning, it's really good. And I, I didn't realize Nokia did that sort of thing. That's actually, you know, I only think of them as outdated old cell phones. So good to know that they do other things. Yeah. And a lot of the phone companies are getting into it now with um, mobile cell tower that they sure. can literally just go and chuck up a drone, usually a tethered one, so that they can power it for an extended period of time during disasters. So some good technology. Absolutely. Let's move on, and we're going to go right now to our guest. So with that, welcome to the High Tech Redneck. Hello, Nick. How you doing? Doing good. How about yourself? I'm doing good. Welcome to Oz by Drone, and thank you for being one of the guys in the background there all the time as part of the, the crew watching the show. Of course. I love watching this show. Yeah. So tell me, Nick, where are you from? I'm from uh, Michigan in the United States. Uh, if you don't know where it is, it's the one that looks like a mitten. A mitten. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And um, how long have you been flying for? I've been flying now uh, for two years. Okay. And uh, we've got some of your footage that we're going to put on the background while we chat. Let's just put that up there now, number two. We're just going to skip past what was the Nokia one because we've gone out of order a bit. There we go. Ah, yeah, so uh, this is one of the companies that I do uh, uh, business with, and uh, they asked me to do a video of their uh, grand opening for their location. Uh, so this cool. is just, <clears throat> this is some real estate photography almost? Yes, uh, real estate photography. Uh, they, uh, they like pictures of their roofs uh, for insurance purposes, for uh, uh uh, claims if the homeowner says, hey, uh, you missed a spot on my roof, they'll go, nope, you got it. Yeah, it's funny. Um, insurance and, and roofing and housing is definitely one of the larger potential opportunities in using drones for flight. I know in where I live, we've um, I, I've gone and flown um, two flights in my home complex. We got 20 units and on two occasions, I've had the opportunity to need to go and fly there. Are you doing much insurance work yourself with the drone or? Uh, not insurance work specifically, uh, more of uh, uh, just making sure that if an insurance claim is needed to be made, uh, that this company that I do the work for has footage of the roof in good condition. Uh, okay, so, they so can this, is, the insurance. Yeah. this is the before shot. 
Correct. Okay. Wh which drone were you flying here? Uh, this is the Spark, believe it or not. Oh, nice. Yeah, Spark Spark is awesome. I mean, it you know, people underrate it, I think, as far as what it can do, but it can do some nice stuff. I wasn't too quite sure uh, how much I wanted to get into uh, the drone photography and videography, so I went with the, the best, uh, lowest tier at the time, which was the Spark. Uh, and nice. now I have uh, since upgraded to the Mavic uh, 2 Pro. And oh, yeah. uh, it is <laughs> leaps, big difference. <laughs> leaps and bounds better. Uh, but still, I, there's a place in my heart for the Spark that I absolutely love it. Sweet. Yeah. So other than other than the drone aspect, tell me tell me a little bit more. Um, what where did the name high tech redneck come from? So uh, I was into gaming quite a bit before I uh, did any drone stuff, and uh, my buddies uh, said, "Hey, you're you're a redneck and you like playing computer games. You're quite high tech, aren't you?" Said, yep, so that's a uh, high tech redneck was born. Okay. And what I really wanted to chat to you about today is a non-drone topic. It's kind of a, an ancillary topic. In the background, you, you do a lot of stuff in Discord servers and all of that. There's a lot of our yeah. viewers that might have seen the Discord announcements coming up but don't know what it is. Uh, Discord is a place where uh, you can get together and you can uh, chat with uh, your friends and other people in the community, uh, either with voice or text. You can send pictures. Uh, it's it's well built. Okay. So for those who don't know, we do have our own Ozby Drone Discord server. You'll see Nightbot going and putting up a message from time to time. Um, and one of the things that you can actually do during the show today, you can join Discord and you can be talking live with other people who are watching the show. I don't know. I've got to ask you a question. This is for, for, both, of our, for our, both of our American friends today. Have you ever heard of... Um, a TV program, and oh, it's just slipped my mind. Gogglebox. Do you have that over there in the US? Gogglebox? No. 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 Sound, sounds interesting. No? Okay. So Gogglebox is something where in Australia, people get paid to put a TV camera on the top of their television, and it sits there and records them watching TV. And then well, that I think goes we call and it, gets... We call it Nielsen is, was the equivalent over here. Nielsen. No, no, no. I mean, films them. Hmm. It physically films them. And then they put that together. They edit that together into an episode of people's reactions to common TV shows and uh, <laughs> turn that. It's, it's reality TV. Okay. Yeah. We, we should have Gogglebox for us by drone, right? So as people are watching, <laughs> when, when, uh, when Lloyd makes the, uh, uh, the, the sound effect, we can see people's reaction to it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but absolutely. that's what I'm saying. We can have you goggle boxing in the background. You can be in the Discord chatting with each other. Um, so back to the question, Nick, tell us what else can you do with Discord? What else can, what else can we make this into? Uh, you can make it into anything you want, really. Uh, you can set it up for uh, gaming. You can set it up for hunting, fishing, drones, uh, weather. Uh, I've even seen uh, people... Uh, make discord servers just to uh talk to family uh so if you uh had one person on one side of the world you can share your pictures as a group and your yeah. messages as a group yeah well we're not going to do um goggle box over here where um we're going to rebroadcast your reactions to our show but by all means go and chat with a few other people in the discord server and have some fun there but what we <laughs> Goodness, Lloyd, goggle, goggle box that. <laughs> well, now that we've got there, it's time. It's time. You know what it's time for, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It's time for, oh, no. ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It's time to play Step the Gang. <laughs> and yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. It's that game that you love, that we hate. No, we don't hate it. We absolutely love it because. We like just poking fun at ourselves, the Aussies, who are really, really stupid with their weird words, and the Yanks who have no idea what we're talking about. It's time for Stump the Yank. Okay. Okay. S silly intro over and done with. Okay, yeah. I thought we'd have some fun today. We've got Lloyd in the middle, so we've got three Americans, and what we're doing today, Lloyd is the quiz master, because he's got some American friends Sorry, he's got some Australian <laughs> friends. 
I got a few American friends too. Yeah. Well, the fact that you've got a friend at all is really amazing. But other than that, exactly. Oh. oh. (laughs) So he's got some Aussie friends, and he reckons he knows a few Aussie things. So we're going to get him to be the quiz master, asking the other two guys questions about Australia. Now, here's the good bit. We're going to give away a no limit drones license today. So this is one of the ones that was not used at spin up. There was a few left over. So we're going to give it away. The, the deal is you get a three, li- three month no limit drones license. And if you write a review about it and publish it on social media, it turns into a full unlimited unrestricted license. So what nice. we need to do first, have a look at the chat, Kelly and uh, Nick, go and have a look, find a name in the chat, find out who you're playing for. Okay, who am I playing Pick someone for? totally at random. Oh, I'm going to play for Chris Hope. Chris Hope, you know, okay. You know, Wayne King has a spark. Let's go with him. Okay, so we've got Chris Hope and Wayne King that we're playing for today. So our quiz master in the middle, tell me what you got. Okay, uh, where was this at? Uh, what is an AVO? Is it a new type of drone? Is it an Australian word for avalanche, or is it an Australian word for avocado? Uh, Do we just answer? Um, First person with the correct answer wins. Uh, uh, Avocado. I'm going to go with A. So first person (laughs) with the correct answer was definitely Kelly. Kelly. So ding, on to Kelly. (laughs) I'd uh, I'd like some avo toast, please. Yes, well, okay. I'd like some more of a toast, please. What is, what is a billabong? Oh, now I know it's a brand of t-shirt. Is, uh, is it a brand person, of t-shirt? First person with the correct is it, answer. Is it a uh, teapot? Or is it something you smoke stuff with? Or is it a dried pond in a creek bed? I, I'm going with t-shirt brand. Dead t shirt because <laughs> <laughs> neither one of them are right. Really? What? No, it's the creek no. bed. It's the creek bed. <laughs> why, why would they name a t shirt after a dry creek bread? That, that makes no sense. <laughs> well, who knows? Lamest okay. t shirt ever. Okay. So we've got one All to right. Kelly. One for Kelly. Yeah. All right. So what is a bogan? Is it, uh, let me see here. Is it a boogeyman, something that scares you? Is it a can to drink water out of? Or is it a redneck? <laughs> mm. Well, Nick, I think you, Yeah, I was going to say, you have first vote there. I'm going to go with a uh, can to drink water out of. Actually, the redneck got the right answer. Hey! Oh, redneck hey, wins. I'm on I'm on <laughs> wait, wait, did you uh, know? Uh, did you know uh, you're uh, a bogan? bogan? Yeah, I did not know that. I did not know that. <laughs> so, 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 wait a minute. So, uh, Lloyd, of course, you're from Oklahoma, and you know, you know the famous uh, song about uh, Muskogee, Oklahoma, USA. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. But, but, right. um, up against the wall, redneck mother. So, would that be up against the wall, your bogan mother? Yes, it would be. Okay, it just doesn't work as well. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and for bonus points, where did the term come from? Mm, I'm going to say from uh, a, a guy named Bo who had a gun, and it was Bo Gun. Bo Gun. Nope. Bo it, came from, yeah, I... it came from one year we had a lot of Bogan moths coming around, and they were as annoying as hell, just like rednecks. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh! I don't even know what a Bogan moth is, so you, you lost me on that one. It was a plague that year, a plague of epidemic uh, proportions. Anyway, moving on. We've got a tie, so we need either... Let's do one more for the tiebreaker. Yeah. Okay. Let me get this. Yeah. Hang on a second. Let me... I'm looking for a particular one to see if I can... Hmm. Okay. The term fair dinkum. Ooh. Okay. Is that the name of a game show host in Australia? Is that the name of is that the name they like to call their prime minister? Or is that 
or is that when you're saying, yeah, honestly, really, true? Fedinko. I'm going to go with the prime minister. I'm going with honestly true. And I'm going to start saying that, even if it's not right. <laughs> and that is it. Oh. Uh, Kelly won. <laughs> Fair dinkum. Yeah, absolutely. You got it. Congratulations, Kelly. That means we've got a voucher going oh. to? Uh, Chris Hope. Chris Hope, congratulations. You're yeah, going to get yeah. a copy of Fair, Fair Dinkum. So what, is, what, is, what the hell does that mean, uh, Greg? Fair dinkum. I mean, where does that come from? It's it's just a phrase that means fair dinkum. Really, it's true. It's it's, it's like for real or yeah, uh, okay. real, for yeah. real. You know, in pretty much fairness. It's honest. <laughs> it, it, pretty much, if you have to say uh, to be totally honest, you're probably lying. <laughs> Any, <laughs> anybody, yeah. any, anybody who qualifies their statement with well, to be totally honest with you. Then, then uh, I don't. I don't yeah. really trust those people. Fair dinkum. Yeah, you Bear won. Really, so good. Yeah, yeah right. there you go. We learned some All new. Right. Nice, uh, nice, nice, nice. Uh, here, let's do the high five on Lloyd's head. Yeah, yeah here, here, here. There we go. go. Right. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Here. So at this point, go we're going to say goodbye to our guest. But what we might do is you can actually stick around while we go into. We're going to do FPV corner, doing okay. things a little bit out of order now. So FPV corner, let's go and play that video. Okay. So just a quick comment about FPV Corner and in fact, all of the videos that we play, if you go into the description of the show, you'll notice that we've got links to the channels and the sources where they all come from. I encourage you to go and check those out. Wow, um, some great some creators in there. there. Who, who, who that, is this? So this is Cruises FPV, and this one is entitled um, Ryzen's Playground, a tricky backyard trampoline backflips. Now I'm looking for those backflips. Yeah, well, so, the flying so, so far is, is pretty good. Yeah, so the comments here in the, in the video, um, flying at Ryzen FPV's place was quite the challenge, a tricky Aussie bush backyard, some trampoline backflips, power loop gaps, treetop cruising, and bush dodging, got stuck really good at the end lol so um let's have a look fair dinkum fair dinkum <laughs> <laughs> oh god help us <laughs> that's a, that's an awesome word actually I, I'm, I'm gonna have to keep that in mind yeah this this guy is ripping it up i mean cutting through so those what trees. do you say and so so what do you say for something that's unbelievable or unbelievably incredible in the u.s in australia Oh, there uh, we go, oh, the trampoline oh, hey. backflips. Oh, wow. Struth. Oh. Again, Struth. double tap. Struth. There's the word. Struth. Struth. Like, like Struth. it's, like it's the, whoa, under, under the trampoline. Wow. That, oh, hey. Wow. That is pretty cool. Yeah. I wonder what he's flying. I wonder what size that is, like a little 250 or a... Does it say in the description? I don't have. No, I don't have. Wow. How, how uh, Greg, have you done much with FPV? Flown, flown any FPV? Like, like oh, uh, uh, an acro, acro mode kind of stuff? I wish you could say that I have. I mean, the only way I got close to that is when I first started getting into droning and my wife bought me some Kmart drones, you know, some cheapies. They were yeah. non, um, non-assisted drones and, you know, I learned to fly them first. And, uh, right, it's and good. Then, yeah, so, well, I lost both of them, so <laughs> I don't know if it's good. Well, yeah, you know, it's every time you make a mistake, hopefully it's the last time you make it. Well, the mistakes weren't so much um, flying mistakes. They were range mistakes, and the drones went to meet yeah. their maker in the bush. And You know, it's funny, too. Even if it's not an FPV drone, for some reason, every person that I've met that gets a new drone, the first thing they want to do is fly it really high and really far away. Like, like just that's just sort of human nature, I guess, because it's the worst possible thing you can do with a non-GPS drone, unless you really yeah. know what you're doing. You know, they take this toy drone and, 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 you know, it's my kids even. I'll give them a chance to fly and it's 75 feet in the air. I'm like, bring it down, bring it down. Mm. Yeah, I wasn't, I, I had it for a decent amount of time before I lost it, but yeah, I, it went away. It's somewhere in the in the bush. Yeah, yeah. That's a didgeridoo. That's a real, what am I? 
Anyway, just a quick comment again. Go to the description for the channel, Cruises FPV. His um, link to his channel is in the description. Go check him out. To let him know that you is he an Aussie? saw him here. Yeah, all of these videos today are Australian videos. He is oh, an Aussie. Nice. Well done. See, I, I, I thought that then everything would be spinning in the opposite direction. Oh, that was bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Southern, Southern Hemisphere thing. He's a good pilot. Okay. That's for sure. He is a very good pilot. We've had him on here a few times before as well. Sweet. Yeah. So um, we're going to say goodbye to Nick at this point. Thank you, Nick, for being part of our crew. Hi, Nick. Jump, nice jump to meet you. Into, jump into Discord in the background. Say hello to Nick, guys, if you um, got a moment. He'll um, be in the Discord, I'm sure, for a while. And of one more thing. Nick, yes. tell people, how do you talk voice in Discord? Uh, all you got to do is uh, click on the voice chat and it'll automatically put you in. We got to make sure you have a microphone and a headset. Otherwise, you won't be able to hear or speak. Yeah. A lot of people get stuck with that. They get into the text chat when they first join the server, but you, just the channel list where you got a list of the channels, you'll see a heading, mm -hmm. voice, um, voice chat, and you click in there and go to general and we'll have a chat to you there after the show as well. Nice. Of course. See you guys okay. there. Thanks again, Nick. Bye, Nick. Catch you later. See ya. Okay, so back to Kelly in the studio. We're going to continue with our news. And where did we get up to? We got up to about 1.7, my producer's telling me. So it's a DJI story. Now, let me, I've got all out of order now and I'm totally disorganized. Yeah, Can I think you, you had just finished the, the Nokia, you had just finished the Nokia story and that was going on. So there we go. So this one, your data is not our business, according to DJI, when they affirmed their commitment to data protection and privacy as part of a presentation at the commercial UAV show in London. As part of the morning keynote, Dr. Barbara Stelzner, the Director of Marketing and Corporate Communications and Management Committee member at DJI, talked about the company's commitment to security and privacy. The announcement follows the news in the US where the U.S. Department of the Interior grounded their fleet of drones, many of which are supplied by DJI over national security fears. Dr. Stelzner said DJI drones do not share flight routes, do not share pictures, and do not share any data unless the pilot actively chooses to do so. But here's an interesting one. Um, amid the privacy backlash, China's DJI is unveiling drone-to-phone <coughs> tracking. So China's DJI, the world's largest commercial drone maker, said on Wednesday it is developing technology that would allow the public to track the registrations of drones in flight using a smartphone amid a broader industry push to make such data available. So Kelly, meaning, it's interesting. Meaning this, we've got both sides meaning of that the, coin. The, the, the The DJI drone is broadcasting your uh, basically your registration information and anybody with an app can see it. Is that what you're saying? Yep. So what happens, right? Already we know that the drone has already got drone ID and you can use Aeroscope. So what DJI are now doing, they're launching an app. So every time you take off, even though DJI in the first story says, we don't have your data and we don't want your data, it's now going to talk back to DJI servers. And then when you log in with the app, anyone that's within a certain radius from you will appear on a screen on your phone. So okay. it's really, it's interesting that you've got, on one hand, we don't want your data, but we're also sharing it publicly now. So, Well, so, so you want my take on that? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Do you have a license plate on your car? I do. Can, can anybody within visual line of sight of your car tell, tell what your license plate is? Um, I mean, it's, so it's, it's, bas <clears throat> it's basically the same thing, right? It's just an identifier that says, this is the person flying this thing. And if you're not doing anything illegal or stupid, why do you care if people know that you're flying it? I, I have no problem. Can with I it. answer the? Can I answer that? Sure. Um, two, there's two answers. The first one That's is Joe. <laughs> the first question yeah, I, is do you I'm have sorry, a no, license no, no, no greg you can't answer that that's that's uh, off <laughs> um do do either of your children have a bicycle and do they have a license plate on their bicycle uh no okay. they don't have and, a license plate and if they did have a license plate registration scheme what would you do what would you say the value of that scheme is if people could forge and falsify those license plates, would you think it was a, 
a waste of time if that was possible? Well, yes, yes, it would definitely be, especially if it was easy to do. Do you think that these uh, beacons and and uh, these things are going to be easy to falsify? Absolutely, they are right now. Um, because mm. right now you've got the existing um, drone ID system that was created by DJI. Right now, I can go and get a little Raspberry Pi for 50 bucks and chuck some code on it and um, draw pictures of flight paths that look very um, unusual. Bad. Bad. Yeah. Yes, that's the one. And I, I, I can list the pilot of the, 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 the plane drawing these pictures in the sky as Donald Trump if I wanted to. I don't have to say it's me. I don't have to put my serial number there. It's not digitally secure protocol. That would be huge. That is huge. And it's, it's no, really no, huge. <laughs> <laughs> Donald Trump joke. So, uh, so, uh, so here's the other thing though, Greg, and, no and, and this is, this is actually, uh, this is actually my bigger concern. So because I do videos and my, my drones are on videos a lot, uh, you know, you have your registration number on, on the drone. And at one point you could put your registration number in the battery compartment where no one could see it unless they remove the battery. Now they want it visible outside. And I've been hesitant to do that because I actually am concerned that I put my registration number on the outside. I'm flying, a, you know, I'm using my drone in a video. Somebody takes my registration number and then they put it on their own drone and then they go to see, do something dumb with it. And then it gets traced back to me. That, that Kelly, concerns me a lot more. Yeah, but Kelly, you, you've just defeated your own argument. You said you've got license plates that can be seen on a car. Well, that's true. That's true. I, I, I think, though, I, I do think, though, a car is such a big physical thing that that kind of proving where it is at any given time is uh, is is a little harder to do than with a drone. You know, I'm, what I'm talking about is I, I've got my I've got my drone. Somebody in Dallas sees sees my video. They see my reg number. They pull my reg number. They make a fake one. Then they fly into the Dallas Cowboys stadium during a game, crash the drone. And then when the authorities get a hold of it, they see the reg number and they trace it back to me and they say, what were you doing flying over the Dallas Cowboys stadium? And I wasn't, you know, that's, that's really, and I guess what you're saying is maybe it's possible with, with this scenario as well. I just don't know how easy, you know, you being more of a tech guy, I, I think the barrier for somebody doing what you described with the Raspberry Pi is much higher than some idiot with a label maker making a fake uh, label. Does that make sense? I don't know that it's that high. I really don't know that it's that high. Hmm. It's pretty easy. And even if you did want to do that on your actual drone itself, right? We already know that um, uh, root access is available to the file system on on all DJI drones. I think at this point, so just about anything can be changed and modified. So. Well, that's why everybody's starting to fly FPV drones, right? Because they don't really have all that stuff. It's just yeah. a flight flight controller and and uh, and a video signal, and that's it. I'll just, no share my final, yeah, I'll just share my final thought. At the end of the day, I don't want a company, any company, it doesn't matter if it's DJI or whoever, involved in licensing and registration of drones. They should have no part of it whatsoever. Your local authorities, your CASA or your FAA, need to issue a digital certificate, which is not something that can be spoofed, and that needs to be part of an ID system. And until that happens, I'm not interested. That's just my two cents. Well, well, let me ask you this: If if uh, if if DJI's solution involved encryption that was hard to break, you know, uh, like like military grade 128 encryption, if if that was the case, and and then your app, I can see my dog back there, and then your app was um, your app was able to decrypt it, but you couldn't spoof it. Would that be better in your opinion? There's two halves. There's the actual identity itself, which I believe needs to be a certificate. So that's that's issued by your local regulator. And number okay. two, when you get the actual data, let's say you've got an app, it shouldn't share anything other than like a number or an identifier, which can then be given to CASA or the FAA or whoever. But you shouldn't see the name, the serial number or any of that data, just this government issued id number that's all right and then, and then that has to be decrypted to identify the person is that what you're saying absolutely i'm taunting my dog by the way this is how i taunt my dog what's your dog's name jenga hey jenga say, say hello jenga say hello say hello she kind of looks like a uh, dingo doesn't she 
the dingo ate them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. So we say that all the time because she would eat your baby. She's like that. Yeah. Yeah. She's good girl. All right, you go on. Let's go on. We've got a couple more stories to get through, and then we'll get into our Explore Australia. So our second last story, this one over here, Fuji Film is in talks with DJI to make their Fuji X-T3 camera and other Fuji cameras work with DJI drones. The press nice. release doesn't say which DJI drones specifically the T3 will work with. Um, will it be the Inspire 3 um, when it comes out? In addition to working with DJI drones, Fuji also have announced that the camera will work in a similar fashion with um, Xiun gimbals. So basically when, the US... When you say when you say work with, are you talking about like being mounted on and, and uh, integrated no, no. with? I'm talking USB cable from the camera connecting to the device and being able to focus to to take a, a still shot to be able to turn on and off recording all of those kind of functions. Oh, you mean you mean for gimbals or do you mean for uh, do you mean for uh, do you mean for drones like like Both. actually on an you said it on an Aspire. Wow. OK, yeah. so hypothetically on an Inspire or on a gimbal, you will be able to remotely change the focus of the camera. You will be able to remotely control it. Just think you've got your local app. It's able to do what you would be able to do if you could physically touch the it's camera. It's like having a Ronin, like having a Ronin S mounted to the yeah. to the drone. Yep. Wow. That's cool. Looking forward to it. Moving on, we've only got a couple more to go. One, two, three more stories. The next one is um, AI racing. Um, this one over here, the um, Alpha Pilot AI Drone Racing Innovation Challenge is the first large scale open innovation challenge of its kind in Baltimore with the Artificial Intelligence Robotic Racing Circuit. With more than $2 million in prizes, this is the Olympics of crowdsourcing acting as a spotlight on the development of autonomous drones. Now we've just got a short clip. Let's move to the second one. Hand-eye coordination, reflexes. Well, yeah, this is, uh, is this part of DRL that's doing this? It's related to them, but not directly them. So they're in partnership. Yeah, I think Lockheed Martin is involved in this and-, and uh... Absolutely. But this is this is Lockheed actually talking about it now. Okay. Yeah, I, I know. I know a lot of the pilots from DRL have said they're going to crush the clunkers. That was their term for uh, beating the AI pilots. Yeah. Is the audio coming through to you at all? To develop a no, I'm, I'm just seeing the video. To compete against okay. top human pilots on unique courses. Why cool video. Though. Yeah. Look, we got a Wirecast bug. I'll just turn the audio down since you can't hear it. But anyway, long story short. Yeah, see, it is DRL. Yeah, it's DRL. It's Lockheed coming together. And Lockheed, they want the technology of whoever writes the software to fly the drones. They want that artificial intelligence. And, you know, right, by right. offering prize money, it's a good way to go and um, kickstart that kind of a campaign. Yeah, it's like crowdsourcing the uh, development of this AI, this this 3D space AI. Absolutely. And I think, to be honest, right, day one, there's no way they're going to come anywhere near any of the pilots on day one. But as time goes on and artificial intelligence learns, the more times you've got something learning how to do something, eventually it will beat pilots for speed. Absolutely. Well, depends on who the pilot is, right? If it's Lloyd and I, they might beat us. Right. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the robots are coming. Look out! But Look let out me, let me, let me, yeah, let me give you this in the context of something that I did at university. We had um, a slot car set, and we wrote artificial intelligence code to do the slot car. And the only control you had then was position, faster or slower, and where right. it is on the track at any one point in time. So we had sensors to learn where it is. And if you keep that thing running long enough and the negative feedback loop is crash or fall off the track, eventually it's unbeatable. So right. same it thing. Just, it just learns where to slow down and it learns where it learns exactly what speed it should be going and it can just test, you know, test again and again. Absolutely. So I think there's a lot of opportunity in there for some really smart stuff over time. Sure, sure. No, I, I'm, I'm excited about it. I, I heard about that about... A year and a half ago, and and uh, I don't know if they're televising it or if it's something you can watch, but I would love to check it out. 
Yeah. So link in the description as with all of our stuff and you can check out some more information on, on that. Okay, two stories to go. This one is a beyond visual line of sight test. This is the first um, operation using only onboard detect and avoid systems. And it's the first of its kind doing that. Previous testing, we're having a look at data from aircraft and having a look at their transponders to work out where they are for detect and avoid. But this one is using only onboard detect and avoid systems. So, so it's some good progress in the um, integration pilot program in the US. Very cool. Very cool. Well, and and I think um, you know, there's there's certainly new tech and new regulations coming out. They're going to allow more of that sort of thing to happen. More more beyond line of sight flights and easier to get night waivers and you know all, all the stuff that's happening right now. Uh, some of it's good, you know, not all of it's bad. But but I think that people are starting to realize that there's use cases that you, that can be done safely that might involve going beyond line of sight. Absolutely. Okay, last story of the day. This one is um, line of sight impacting. We've um, seen the story the other day on, on Ken's show about lasers. Um, this was a Chilean protest and they used lasers, according to the story, to bring down a police drone. Now, that in itself is a story, but people were saying that they didn't think it was real um, when they were in the chat on Ken's show the other day. Um, but just think about the impact to a, a camera sensor when you've got a laser being shone in there, it's going to burn out that sensor and they're going to be unable to land. But here is a different view. This view is actually on a police helicopter at the same event and people were shooting lasers at the police helicopter. You can see how, how little vision you're going to have looking out the window. And that's not yeah. only the direct, direct hit on their camera. If it was a direct hit, the camera would be down. But but I, I well with the police helicopter obviously you you can whoops we've lost helicopter nope uh, I'm here yep you're back can you hear me okay yep, gotcha I was just saying can you hear me yep I was just saying with the police helicopter you're not going to be able to move as quickly I don't know why that drone didn't just you know truck over here real quick. So uh, this is an interesting question. I wish John was here because he's gone and recently got his um, Australian night um, exemptions and all of that kind of stuff. When you are flying at night and you've got to be situationally aware of where you are, which way you're facing, and if your drone is in line of sight in terms of having a strobe on it, but which way you're facing is going to be augmented by your camera. Would you say that's a fair right. statement? Right. Absolutely. So you, yep. You've lost your camera. You can't see. And in fact, part of the standard procedures manual for anyone who's got a nighttime waiver is going to be, how do you land? And the best and simplest way, except in emergency to land, is to shine a light in the direction of the drone and use that as kind of a glide path, come mm, towards okay. the light. So sure. if you've taken out your camera, it's, it's going to be a very, very difficult operation to fly. True, true. Yeah, no, I can see that. It's it's uh it's interesting that, that that was the weapon of choice. I assume those were just, you know, like laser pointers. You can buy, you, especially if you buy them from China, you can buy some really bright lasers, you know, that that really kick off some uh, especially the green ones, kick off some yeah. juice. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, at this point, I'm just going to pause. We're going to go into Explore Australia in a minute, but I just want to say thank you very much for being with us um, as our yeah. co-host today. Do you want to share anything more about um, about SpinUp while we got a little bit of time left? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It was it was it was amazing. Uh, you know, I, I I really wish everyone watching tonight. Some of the folks watching tonight were there, and I, I will tell you, I shared this with a few people. My biggest anxiety was that it wouldn't be perceived as as good as the year before because 2018 was pretty good. Uh, and I got a lot of feedback that it was, you know, that everybody really enjoyed the venue. They really liked the speakers. They enjoyed the opportunity to meet each other. That's the biggest part of it, honestly, guys, is, is, is if you get to come down, you finally get to meet all these people that you interact with online in, in real life, you know. And so for me, that's the most special part and what's, what's coolest about it. But, yeah, I was, I was really happy with how it turned out. I, I certainly every year I learn things about that I could do better, you know, and I, I try to figure out ways to, to keep the cost down but still make it a really high quality program. So I'm just it's going to get better and better is my hope. 
Yeah. So, you know, there's one question I got though, Kelly, when are you going to spin upside down under? Oh, man. I mean, that, that to me would be the ultimate. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what, here, here's the challenge, Greg. Can, can you get a hundred people there? Can, can you, you know, cause you know, you know, the train, you know, the people, if, <laughs> if you could get a hundred people there, then it makes it economically feasible because you have to have a hundred people at, let's say, it, it costs about 10 grand to do this thing, right? To, to, yeah. to have the food, to have the venue, to have the insurance, to have the, the, um, you know, the, the catering, the, all that stuff. Um, it just, it just takes money to do all that. And so if you can get a hundred people there and they're willing to pay a hundred dollars, $150 each, then, then let's do it, you know, but yeah. I don't know. I, I have a hard time doing that in my own backyard here in, in Austin. Uh, so I think I'd have a really hard time in a different country, but you know, as soon as, you know, here's an interesting idea I actually thought about, and I'd be curious what people in the chat think, is to set up a GoFundMe or some sort of a, a crowdsource crowdfunding thing for SpinUp and then try to get people to commit to it in advance to say, you know what, I'll put $100 in now knowing that it's going to happen. And then, and then their ticket becomes free or reduced at that point. But basically collect the money first to ensure that there's enough there to pull it off. Because versus... it's a lot of stress up front to, I, I know this, John was doing um, a drone camp. So he was doing a camp that was aimed at teens to go and teach them how to fly mm -hmm. to get not an official, uh, officially recognized part 107 or anything, but, you know, a decent set of tuition on how to learn to fly safely. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we couldn't get enough people to do it, unfortunately. And, um, you know, John had invested time and money not all of which he could yeah. get back. So that had to be called off. Well, and, and here's the other thing about that, Greg, is, is it's not just a matter of uh, people signing up or not signing up. It's when they do it. A lot of people wait till the last minute. So you don't have a really accurate head count until, you know, a week before. And you've already booked your venue and you've already kind of planned for a certain number. So I guess the reason I brought up the crowdfunding thing is that might allow you to have a more accurate head count and a more accurate commitment on who's going to actually, um, you know, actually come and, and is willing to put money down and say they'll be there in advance. That, that's kind of a theory that I had, but I love doing spin up. Don't get me wrong. You know, if, if you if you take all that out of it, meeting everyone uh, and hearing the speakers, the speakers were just amazing. They're there. And they're all by the way, all the videos from the speakers, except for Phillips, which I'm uh, waiting to. Oh, actually, I'm supposed to launch it today. Uh, they're all they're all online so people can go watch those. But it's not the same as being there, but at least you get a flavor of the topics. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe um, maybe you could do something different where um, you could have an online subscription and actually have live streaming next time. Yes. And um, so, people who've subscribed can see it live. That That's exactly what I'm thinking is next time, uh, basically, if you support, if, if you're part of the flight crew, uh, you know, which is can be as low as three dollars or five dollars a month. If you, if you're in that group or if you join that group, you can watch the live stream. You know, and that that would help offset the cost a little bit. So yes, yeah. great idea. If you need a producer there, um, me and the wife, we could do a great job for you. <laughs> I, you know what? You know what? I, I would I, absolutely. Actually, actually, it's funny because you you know how hard it is to do um, to to do all the button pushing and to be the talent at the same time. That's not it's an easy thing to do. Impossible. I don't know how so, Ken does it. That that guy is a yeah. freak of nature. Well, he's been doing radio for so long that I think it's kind of second nature to him. But but ultimately, uh, I would totally take you up on that, and 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 I would take you up on the notion of doing one in Australia. It's just it comes down to making Finances, sure we can get enough people there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, look, thank you for your chat about spin up. A um, couple of quick community service announcements before we finish today. As always, if you would like to send anything to us, upload at gregcoonit.com for email. If you want to send us a video, send a link. And um, people, just a reminder, we're not just on YouTube. We're on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, Mixer. Um, we're on Periscope, on the Twitter platform. Uh, and a couple of others. I can't remember the names of all of them, to be honest. So do do help us out. Go and have a look at some of those other platforms. Search for us and that'll help us to increase our numbers on those platforms as well. If you want to post anything, 5 slash 127 Princess Highway, Sylvania, New South Wales, triple two four. And uh, the last little quick announcement of the day, No Limit Drones, just want to thank them again for um, giving some licenses to the people at Spin Up and a few of the leftovers that we've got here. We've given away one today. Congratulations again, Chris Hope. 
Just a reminder of what No Limit Drones is, it gives you the ability to unlock your aircraft. Just imagine if you've got a car, it's interesting we were talking about cars and license plates before. If you've got a car and it's capable of going a certain speed, but the factory had limited you to 100 kilometers per hour or 80 miles per hour, or whatever the number is, this takes off those limits to um, allow you to explore and do what you want to do with it. You've got to be sane, you've got to be safe about what you do, but it takes off the chains. That's what No Limit Drones can do for you. Breaker okay. of Chains. Breaker Chamber of Chains. Of Dragons. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks again for being part of the show today. And thanks again, Nick, Happy as well in it. the background. And Lloyd, any last words or comments from you? No. <laughs> it's a great show. <laughs> yeah, we had fun funny. today. Oh. I asked for Lloyd words, can't... not not sound effect boxes. <laughs> oh, Lloyd. Okay. okay, guys. That's enough Great for show. now. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being part of it. And um, please do um, comment in the video afterwards. It helps um, get our visibility up in YouTube if people have a little conversation um, in the comments. So thanks and see you next time. Bye-bye for now. Bye. <coughs>
Yeah, so this is Queensland. Enough said. Top end, bottom end. Rainy, uh, okay. not rainy. Um, so yeah, I'm going to Gulgong. And um, it's where my grandfather was born and where he came and was reared and so on. So I'm doing a bit of the family tree exploration and it's a town, that, the hotel motel there is called the $10 Motel. It actually <laughs> cost more than $10, but I, I guess it might've had a seedier past. Nice. Or maybe that was a really expensive hotel at one point. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. But the upscale. Um, yeah, it should be fun. Are you driving or flying? Um, driving. I think it's about like a five-hour drive from um, from wow. Sydney. Okay. But I'm going to fly when I'm up there, taking the Phantom up, going to explore and um, see what we find. Going to Galgong, Maji. Uh, what are some of the other places? That sounds like fun. What do you What do you drive, by the way, Greg? Just curious. Um, at the moment, I drive a Camry, which is now almost completely my daughter's car. I'm waiting on. Um, delivery of a, a RAV4. And you guys um, are all kind of wacky with your steering wheels on the other side and driving on the other side, We have our steering right? wheel on the right side of the car. <laughs> Which is the wrong side of the car, by the way. It's the right side. <laughs> Technically, yes, but but according to the rest <laughs> of the world, no. As a matter of fact, I feel like I feel like England and Australia and like some, some place in Asia are the only places that do that, right? Everybody else is a little more sane. Well, no, that's where the real people drive. It's just those other people who think they're the center of the world and everything revolves around them. They drive on the other side. That's... <laughs> have you have you driven in a, have you, you've driven in other, in the, on the other side though, in other countries? I have, I have. I, I actually rented a car in England in 2010. I was there for work and I rented a car and all they had was a stick shift. And I can drive a stick shift, but I'm used to driving a stick shift and shifting with my right, you know? And because my because it's on the right side, so I had to shift with my left, and it was just crazy because I I would get in the wrong side of the car. I try to wave at people, and I'd wave with the wrong hand, and I I mean it just it was all messed up. I did not crash, but I several times drifted into the wrong lane and realized it at the last second. Yeah, I I had a car accident in the Philippines, and I'll tell you about that in when the next video comes up. But before I do that, let me just quickly share my um, getaway this week going to Ralston I'm going to Mudgee I'm going to Wilbertree Walla Gulgong Tullawong and my favorite sounding um, place name get ready for it Dunny Do <laughs> Dunny Do these don't sound like real places Dunny Do um, for you know what a Dunny is do you have that word we do not the word is, it's an Australian slang word. A dunny is a toilet. And I can't believe that there's a place in Australia called Dunny Do. And dunny apparently I've do. got a relative from Dunny Do. <laughs> and he's full of, you know what? Well, he's we'll find out, but he's probably six feet under. This is many generations back. Uh, well, dun dun dun. please bring us, send a postcard from Dunny Do. Bring us something back from there. <laughs> Oh, look, I'm glad we um, had a few extra minutes to go and play Explore Australia. Yeah, it's beautiful footage. This is Australian outback at its best, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. I've never been there, but I can imagine. When are you coming? I, oh, goodness. Uh, you know, it, it varies. It's, it's actually, it's funny because uh, I, I, I really, really thought I was going to get to go this spring, which of course didn't happen. And it kind of put a bug in me to want to go to um, to Asia as well as Australia and, and New Zealand, is, of course. Um, just kind of make a month trip out of it would be amazing. Um, when, when we get enough people to do to do spin up down under, then I'm I'm going to uh, do you it. You got to come before then anyway. But while we're talking, this is Krog Films, the Hidden Wonders Australia Southern Highlands, a short video of late afternoon drone mission up the Beautiful. mountain to film through the valleys and around some of the cliffs in, and waterfalls in the area. These hidden gems are everywhere if you look hard enough. Oh, wow. Drone footage giving a view from a rarely seen angle of the area. Um, That's I did beautiful. miss one before. The previous one was um, from Michael Whitehead, the Casino Tree and Wilpenia Creek. That's where that one was taken. That was in That's South awesome. Australia. 
Yeah, and they're not afraid the to fly before, backwards we? either. No, they're, they're not, not afraid, afraid to fly backwards. Yeah. Again, do me a favor, go and check out the links in the description, go to the channels, let them know you've heard about them here and say hi. This last one is from Gene Christoph, Australia Outback on a DJI Mavic Pro 2 4K. Um, this is obviously not 4K while we're live here, but this was Australia's Northern Territory's Outback where he was flying there. Is that, is that audio from the, from the drone? No, is that what you're hearing? that audio is from somewhere else. I think it was from Nick. <laughs> hmm. Well, there it's we beautiful. I, I didn't realize Australia had that kind of, that many waterfalls. You know, it, I always think of it more as a desert. Well, there are some parts of it, but you know, definitely Depends not. Depends on where you are. Desert. Yeah. yeah. Makes you want to, um, makes you want to jump off the cliff into one of those lakes. You know, I bet it's, I bet it's very uh, clean water being out in the country like that. Yeah. So just before we um, finish this today, um, quick chat about next weekend. I don't know exactly what the format's going to be next weekend because, as I said, I'm doing a bit of a getaway thing. It may be a informal short show. I don't know. Depends if I get time to pull together some stuff after getting back. We'll see. Busy. Sorry, what was that? I said, in other words, I need to get busy, make sure I have all my stuff together in case you decide last minute to do a show. <laughs> we'll work it out. <laughs> well, could you do it from the road or will you be back home at that point, Greg? I should be back home at that point, but preparing and putting together this show takes a lot of time each week. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I know. I know. Kelly, you're smart. You only do your show once a month. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's exactly why, man. It's exact. I can. It's all I can handle is uh, is once a month. But but um, yeah, it's it's great. I mean, everybody, all you guys who do this on a regular basis, I applaud you. And I think it's so cool that pretty much on any night of the week, I can hop on my computer and hang out with friends online. You know, and that's that's all you guys. Um, it's it's a neat thing to be able to do. Yeah. And thanks to um, thanks to you for all you do on your show and um, Lloyd on yours and Nick, you're not a live streamer yet, but we'll convert you later. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, again, thanks to our audience. I don't know what's going to happen next week. This is my getaway. It's my birthday week kind of thing. So I, I turn 50 somewhere between now and next weekend. And, oh, uh, yeah. well, congrats. I, I, I just turned 50 a month ago, so it's it's not too bad. Y'all are old. Y'all are old. <laughs> You're old. Yeah. yeah, Nick. 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 What are you? How old are you? Uh, I will be twenty-eight in a couple of days. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Okay. okay. You're my grandkids' age. <laughs> yeah. Those dang snowflakes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, let's let the snowflakes all melt because we're going to go. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thanks for being part of the show today. It was good to have y'all here. <laughs> <laughs> Did I do the y'all right? Okay. Y'all, yeah, you good. did a good job there, mate. Good to have y'all here. <laughs> okay. Yep. Thanks for watching. All See right. you next time. Bye for now.